In my book, Creative Systems Theory, I divide the most commonly encountered views of the future into five scenarios, to use the language of futurists. We've arrived scenarios. We've gone astray scenarios. Post-industrial information age scenarios. Post-modern constructivist scenarios. And transformational new paradigm scenarios. In contrasting them with the concept of cultural maturity, I describe how each stops short of providing effective guidance. I also delineate how each is best thought of, less as a product of reasoned consideration than in how the future looks from a particular kind of limited ideological perspective. That the first two differ fundamentally from the concept of cultural maturity's more systemic perspective takes us is most obvious. Culturally mature perspective makes clear that modern age belief is not an endpoint. We have not arrived. It also emphasizes that going forward in rewarded ways is very much an option. Neither have we gone astray, at least in some ultimate sense. The remaining three scenarios share with the concept of cultural maturity that each supports both that further steps in the human story lie ahead and that these further steps have the potential to be positive. But in the end, their conclusions are again fundamentally different and stop fundamentally short of ultimately what is required. The kind of polarization between the political right and the political left I address in Perspective and Guidance for a Time of Deep Discord most often reduces to we've arrived or we've gone astray scenarios, but at times we also find bits of these other more future-oriented ways of thinking implied in them. Because people can confuse these three more positive future-oriented ways of thinking with what the concept of cultural maturity describes, I will do a separate compare and contrast episode for each. Here I address postmodern constructivist scenarios. Postmodern thought has had major influence in recent decades, particularly in academia. It emphasizes our time's loss of familiar cultural guideposts and essentialist truths in general. Advocates of postmodern perspective argue that we construct the, reality, the realities we live in. They also argue that the defining task of the future is to do so more consciously. The best of formal postmodern thought at least approaches cultural maturity's threshold. But postmodern ideas vary greatly in their success at stepping over it, over it or even usefully recognizing its implications. Postmodern constructivist perspective today gives us at once some of the best and some of the weakest of future related thought. Cultural mature perspective views postmodern thought as providing a useful first step. But it proposes that surrendering our past cultural absolutes can only be a beginning. We must also learn to relate and think in more post-essentialist ways, ways that are more encompassing, nuanced, systemic, and precise. Particularly with the more extreme of interpretations, postmodern thought commonly reduces to an ultimately unhelpful one conclusion is as good as another relativism. Postmodern belief had its start in the philosophical ponderings of existentialism. With the growing influence of social constructivism in the later part of the 20th century, it came to be a central influence in intellectual circles. Today, postmodern sensibility has come to define much of popular culture, helping us helping take us beyond the old heroic romantic narrative that until recently defined the larger portion of shared cultural expression. But while on both fronts, more formal thought and popular expression, postmodern perspective makes contribution, in each case it stops ultimately short of where we need to go. Formal postmodern constructivist ideas share with the concept of cultural maturity that they question the absoluteness of past ways of understanding. 
They emphasize our time's loss of final truce, and they point out accurately that beliefs vary widely between cultures, evolve over time, and are subject to human manipulation. But postmodern constructivist ideas fail to help us understand at all deeply why today we see such fundamental questioning of past belief. And of particular importance, rarely do they offer anything of substance to replace what they insightfully recognize has been taken away. Some formal postmodern constructivist thought does make a start at the needed greater sophistication of understanding. The claim that we construct the realities we live in at least applies the possibility of crafting our world in more effective ways. Postmodern constructive, constructivist thinkers often make predictions that are at least generally consistent with more systemically conceived options. For example, how institutions and assumptions of the modern age will give way to a more fluid and pluralistic cultural structures, and how understanding in the future will be more often characterized by multiple perspectives and often by contradiction. But fears of falling back into old absolutes severely limit postmodern constructivist thinking. Even the most fully developed ideas stop, stop short of the critical next step. They fail to help us construct our personal and collective realities in the needed, more dynamic and complete ways. Indeed, postmodern constructivist beliefs often directly interfere with efforts to go further. Postmodern constructivist thinkers tend to assume that there are no universal truths, only truths specific to particular times and places. Formal postmodern postmodern constructivist thinkers can get stuck in an immediate skepticism toward anything that might look like overarching concepts. This skepticism has admirable roots. Overarching ideas in times past have had their origins in narrow and often self-serving belief. But postmodern thought's common distaste for big picture conception, indeed conception of any substantive sort, undercuts its ability to contribute creatively to the larger conversation. Postmodern theorists tend to be better at critique than they are at providing anything useful as perspective, and often theirs is a most limited and indeed limiting and deadening kind of a critique. Identification with our ultimate inability to know for sure, and with different strokes for different folks, notions of diversity ultimately undermine efforts to effectively move forward. There are thinkers of postmodern constructive constructivist bent, whose contributions I very much respect. For example, Richard Rorty in the philosophical sphere, and, and many important contributions to, with constructivist perspective and education. But postmodern constructivist views, even at their best, can provide at best a start toward understanding either the present or the future. Over the last couple of decades, postmodern constructivist sensibility has come simultaneously to have less of a hold in academic circles and a growing influence in spheres of popular expression. With contemporary art, music, humor, and popular culture more general, we see increasing use of irony and a mixing of influences, often from far-flung sources. As with the earlier, more formal postmodern contribution, this popular influence has at once invited the beginnings of more complex and multifaceted sensibility and resulted in efforts that often contribute much, much less than they claim. Too often today we find popular expression that confuses the glib, ironic, and often simply random with substance. At worst, we get expression that is little more than artificial stimulation in the name of significance. This postmodern influence increasingly permeates not just entertainment, but also more serious forms of popular expression. 
For example, it has had growing influence in the offerings of public media. I think of Ira Glass's This American Life on National Public Radio as first introducing postmodern irony and contradiction to the public media world. Today, such sensibilities more and more define public media programming, particularly that which attempts to reach a younger demographic. While initially this aesthetic was new and made a contribution, all too often today it translates into a difference for its own sake, cleverness that says very little while pretending to be profound. I see this trap threatening to undermine public media's ability to function as a reliable resource. The growing prominence of digital media has played a major role in amplifying postmodern sensibilities influence. Again, we see both benefits and dangers. Digital media's ability to create links between massive amounts of information and between people of differing backgrounds and beliefs fosters greater diversity of perspective. But at once, it plays into postmodern sensibilities' tendency to confuse random associations and undifferentiated stimulation with significance. We find this with entertainment, and we, and we find it, too, with digital content that claims to be more serious again. I find the paucity of meaningful news coverage on the Internet of real concern, and the fact that we don't seem to recognize that paucity even more of a concern. News that it, that it is at all curated rarely raises much beyond above the quality of afternoon soap opera and purported news that is based instead simply on what people are paying attention to, such as the Google News feed, end up combining significance randomly with the worst of triviality, Middle East policy and the Kardashians get equal billing. And the most superficial of digital news is little more than clickbait, masquerading as meaning. A major portion of modern social media fails for a related trap. It claims to be about connectedness, but instead it leaves us estranged in a world of superficial, often largely random and ultimately self-centered associations. One of the deepest hungers people feel in our time is for a sense of connectedness and community. I often do an exercise with groups where I ask people where in their lives they feel most rich and most impoverished. As far as the experience of, of being impoverished, a lack of a deep sense of community wins, hands down. There are instances in which social media provides benefit in real human connectedness, but social media have also contributed to a world in which we commonly confuse the most trivial of human contact with real relationship. If postmodern sensibility did not so much define meaning in our times, we would find this situation quite ludicrous. In summary, the postmodern constructivist contribution, whether of a more formal or more popular sort, reflects well the unsettling realities of our transitional times. When timely, it helps us get beyond the past heroic romantic assumptions, challenges ideology, and confronts worlds that may only seem contradictory from the perspective of what we have known. But in the end, postmodern constructivist beliefs fail to grasp at all clearly what, if anything, may lay beyond today's loss of familiar truths. Because of this, they fail to provide a useful guiding story for the future. When this fail failure is extreme, we find sensibility that becomes, in effect, simply transitional absurdity. I find this ultimately common sense.